Pips, Do it again. Is that just a little tiny Hey guys, welcome to my channel. So I'm going to try to get one more video out before I go on my trip to see Julia. I'm trying to go in, in order from the dates of the recordings. So this is from February 12th. So this is Letitia calling the El Paso Sheriff's Office. So that'll be the first recording. I'm, I think I'm going to put a couple recordings on this video because the first recording is only seven minutes. So here's that. Sheriff's Office evidence. This is Chris. Hi, yes. Um, I was on hold earlier. I think you might have been busy or something, so I waited to call back for a little bit. Um, oh, I'm sorry. It's oh, okay. sorry. Okay. What time did you call? I just called you like maybe 15, 20 minutes ago, and you said, hold on. <laughs> no, that wasn't. There, there's four of us working here, so oh, that wasn't okay. me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I, just, oh, like, I don't recognize your voice. <laughs> I just figured you were busy. Okay, so I'm trying to find out about some contents of mine that was in a car. So um, my, my book bag, which had a lot of my Social Security card, birth certificates, and stuff in the, that was in a car that's still impounded. And I just want to know, uh, they, give me, they gave me the purse one day out of it, but how can I get <laughs> a book bag? And I need my MacBook for school. Your MacBook. Okay. Um, uh, what is your name? Carly Hunt. Carly Hunt, and do you have a case number so I can look it up? Uh, let's see this. I have this paper. It says agency number. Is that it? Or I have a VIN number? It should be agency. Agency number? All right. Uh -huh. 2020 dash 1382. All right. Let's take a look here. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry. You said it's a book bag? There's a black and white book bag that was in the back seat of the white Jetta. And it has like my passport, my social, my birth certificate, my dog paperwork, my MacBook. Okay. Let's see. Yeah, there was like a blue, it was a one blue bag, I had a MacBook in it, and then there was a black and white blue bag, and there was like my diamond rings are in it, and then there was a pink folder that had like my birth certificate and all that in it. Okay. Let's see here. Like, I understand they might still be holding the car, but like, I can't like even like work or anything without having my passport because I'm a flight attendant and Okay. And you said your name is Carly Hunt, is that correct? Carly Hunt. Carly Hunt. Okay, Harley. Well I can tell you right now everything on this case is evidence. So because it's evidence, I cannot release it back to you without written authorization from um the basically a higher authority. Um, they have not given us any written authorizations to release. So unfortunately, what you may want to do is contact the detective on this case. Um, have you been in contact with anybody? No. Okay. All right. Well, let me go ahead and get the lead, lead detective's um, number for you. And you can call them in reference to this, okay? Okay. All right, hold on just one second. Okay. Okay, Harley? Yeah. Okay, so that's going to be Detective Bethel. Okay. And her desk number is going to be 520 mm -hmm. 72 Okay. 91. Okay, thank you so much. You're welcome. Have a good day. Bye. Okay, so the next recording is going to be between Al and Tisha, and this is February 13th. Hello? Tisha? Hello? Hello? 
Hey. Hey. Why didn't you say anything? I did. I said hello. It's just hard because I have to get service off Wi-Fi. Yeah. So, uh, so what's up? Uh, I'm a little hungry. You still haven't eaten anything? No. Huh? No. Why not? Because I don't have any money or cards. They have all that. They have all my debit cards, credit cards. Who has all that? They have it from my car. I oh. don't have anything from my car. Oh, you didn't have it with you? I did. I had my purse with me, but they took my purse and they took my Apple Watch and all that. It took everything I had possession on. Why did they do that? I don't know. But I guess the same reason they took everything that was in my book bag and all they car. I mean, they even took the dog paperwork and my social security card and my birth certificate. Like, my passport, which is why I can't be at the airline because I have to have a passport. You're not working at the school anymore? I thought you was had the early college thing going on. Right. They took my laptop. Then they took my car. So I called them and said, hey, I don't have a way to get to work right now. I'm going to work on you. I should have my car back in a day or two. Well, I'm still waiting and I don't have a way to get to work. And as soon as I don't have a way to drive to Denver and I don't have a passport because I have to have my passport and my crew badge to get on DIA. So you, so you and still... no one can, still to help me get any of it. Who is no one? Like the police or whatever? Like I've called the evidence department several times and just been like, can I at least get my book back? Can I at least get... Anything that deals with my everyday life of operating, my my cards, my passport, and then the guy was like, well, why do you need your passport? I said, well, it's required by FAA to have it with you at all times, or you cannot even get to the airport, you can't do anything. Yeah, you told me that. I forgot. I'm sorry. So I just want to get my contents like that because... How am I supposed to work if I don't have any of it? Yeah, I know. You've I, been I, placed on hold. Please wait for your contact to return. Hello? Hello there. Hello. Hey. What happened? Uh, the Wi-Fi, I don't have a number, so the Wi-Fi just dies, so I had to use this Indian dude's number here, phone number here, to call you back on because I don't, I only have Wi-Fi. Okay. But it, anyway, so like, I don't have any of that stuff, so I'm not trying to purposely not go to work, not do anything, I just need help obtaining any of it to even do anything well i'm having trouble too because they still freaking got my truck and my you know how i have those badges i gotta get in yeah i can't freaking get into my secure part of my job so i can't i can't even do what i'm supposed to be doing either so it's freaking driving me nuts and so like the people are fussing at harley because she needs her high school diploma and she needs a report with her um, ID, social, and high school diploma, and I'm trying to explain to them what's going on. Yeah. I'm like, I just can't get any help. 
because she's supposed to be there every week on base doing stuff. Um. Because she leaves in 28 days. For basic? Yeah. Yeah. Did, what, did anything ever happen with that job? That new MOS? Yeah, the guy wants to talk to her about it. That's why he told her, he said, to come in, but we didn't have a way, so we explained that to him. So We didn't have a way. I don't. We don't have a way to get on base because they have IDs. They have everything. It's in the book bags, everything. Okay. What? What were you talking? What is C? What was that thing you said you called? I just popped in my head. C was C I B or something? Yeah, I. You guys, I'm trying to talk to you about like help, and they're not. I'm not downing or talking about anyone, but they don't need to be the lead agency if they're not going to lead. So the Colorado Bureau of Investigations can even look at it from a different approach. So I called the Colorado Bureau of Investigations and I talked to someone and they're going to call me back. What did you tell them? I didn't say anything bad about anyone. I just said there's a lot of key things that they're choosing to leave out. And I says it's becoming a witch hunt after one person. I said when they're barking up the wrong tree and they're not even following what credible things that I've told them. Well, what, like they what? want tips from the public, but the public was not there. Well, what credible things have you told them? That's what I, in our emails I'm trying to, and I know you said you were waiting to talk to me and everything, but what what is the what is it that you've told them? Because I know we had some, you know, uncertainty about some of the things initially, and that's fine. But like, what what is it that you told them that they're not looking at? What I mean, what is the? Can you walk me through it? I know I asked you for that timeline. Hold on, hold on one second. I can't breathe. Give me one second. Take your time. Just just try to get some deep breaths. I'm just trying to put the window down on this stupid thing because, oh, it's hot. And, like, I'm having to, like, run into people I don't even freaking know. They could be mad killers and shit to be like, hey, can I use your phone? Hey, can I sit in your car for a minute? Hey, do you think I can drive your car to your store? I know. I'm I'm starting to get feel some heat, too. I've, like I told you, when I went to Bass Pro Shop last night, you know, I wanted to get some clothes, but I was trying to hope to run in you on the north end, like you said you were out there, but, you know. I am. Well, I just, I, like I said, I was just trying to hope to bump into you or something, but I feel like I'm having to hide now. That's why I went and got some, like, you know, redneck clothes, like you, the clothes that you don't like, because all those nice clothes I have at the house that you got me, you know, I would just stick out like a sore thumb, and I'm just trying to hide, too. Well, I don't know how long you got, but I just wanted to start with you for Saturday, what I have. Okay. I so, listen. I, I I scooted away for lunch, so I you know probably hour hour and a half. So we got plenty of time. All right. What do you mean scooted away for lunch? Like, like are you like, not? You don't have a car? Yeah, I got a rental car. Uncle Jeff like helped me out with a rental car, but like I just had to get away from all them people. Like I've been telling you, it's just crazy. So. Are you staying by yourself? I'm me and Uncle Jeff. Okay, so your uncle Jeff is there with you. Yeah, okay. it's I've always it's been like me with my family members the whole time, so. So how long can your uncle Jeff stay? I I have no clue. It's people have been okay. kind of jumping in and out, but. Well, I just didn't want you to be by yourself because I've been trying to be with you because I don't think that you should be by yourself with them because it's a bunch of vultures. That's all. Yeah, um, you know I'm not. I'm, I'm starting to slowly see that so but yeah let's just do so, this timeline because okay. I want to hear so, I want to hear your timeline so I can try I to make sense I just want to go from Saturday okay you said you wouldn't question you would just listen Saturday so I want you to hold listen. on Tisha Tisha Saturday like what do you mean Saturday like right before I like me and me and mama left Saturday after you left yes. I got okay gotcha okay all right okay so this is the paper I have I had to get it notarized because that's what that guy said to do right after y'all whoever found us and took Harley's car that's where we had left from was the attorney but anyway alright um, so I'm going to just go through certain things I'm not going to read it verbatim how he did it because it would be more of like in law terms but I, you know key one Albert and his mom left for Denver we put D in in there um, around the house cleaned up G helped with stuff um, helped me get stuff out of his car 
She's, Dan's always barefooted because that was something that he asked me. Even taking the trash out, things like that. He took the trash out. Um, he stepped on something in the garage. So my car parked. You had those boards that were underneath my car, right? Yeah. So Dana was going to go help because he was saying that there was some kind of piece out there that was going to help me. You know the little zip ties that you have on things and it's hard to get off? Yeah. Like the okay, so he was he knew where something was at to go pop those off. So he was going to go get it because I had bought them some things from the clearance store. All right, so Dan had cut his foot on those boards. We flipped the boards over because we were freaking out because I was like, "Oh my god, your daddy said don't get oil or anything from your car and leak on those boards." You know what boards I'm talking about? The one, the, like the two by fours that I have. Like that you drive over to park in the garage? Right. Or yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, I let Gannon sit down in the back of the car. You know how funny I am about my car. But also, we just bandaged it up. Whatever. All we did was stick a bandage on it. Whatever, whatever. And I said something to him about, Gannon, you gotta quit coming out here barefooted. Which I do the same thing. I take dogs out barefooted anyway. Freaking yeah. cold weather. Hey, let me That's ask you. Let me, hold on. Wait a second. I'm just thinking here, and I'm, I, I, and I'm going to listen to everything. Just something that popped in my head. He always goes out the front door to do the trash. That's so weird. Right, but he was helping me unload. Like, I have bought them a bunch of stuff in the clearance store. If you look in the garage. I got you. Okay, I thought you said take out the trash. I'm sorry. Well, he was. But let, let me explain this to you. There's two bags that was put in the garage because I have put a bunch of stuff in there. I would have bought them a bunch of crap that went on sale from the clearance store because they were changing over to like warm weather stuff. But obviously in Colorado, you can still wear the cold weather stuff, which I saw Lena online wearing. So therefore, I knew it was in the house. But anyway, so my point was... Um, he was really, you know, helping me out, whatever, you know, just talking to me about something. Who knows what he was talking about. He tells me about video games. I listen, but I don't understand them. Anyway, so we, so he was bleeding on his foot, and we turned the boards over. Because I was like, oh, my God, I was going to freak out, you know, because these are the boards. He says, don't you get oil on my car. Don't drip on my car, whatever. All right. So um, during this time frame, Gannon was supposed to be taking the trash out. I said, you might as well go and take out the recycle, whatever, whatever. But Gannon kept going to the gate with nothing. And I kept saying, why are you going to the gate? He was like, I'm going to make sure the gate is locked. Well, okay, this is the first I'd known. I knew we were talking about locking the gate, but I didn't know Gannon had the key. I thought maybe you just had the key yourself, you know, whatever, whatever. I didn't know Gannon had the key. Babe, he so didn't, the, babe, but, he, but hold on. He had, The key was in our room in, in the um on top of the dresser the whole time. Remember he kept... But see, I didn't pay attention or okay. remember right, any of that. Right, right. So he kept going out there with the key and saying that he was um, checking to make sure the gate was locked. Okay, benefit of doubt, maybe he was. Because, you know, we had talked about making sure that gate was locked. Or I could have been talking to somebody. I don't know. I'm not speculating. I know I got on him about, hey, doing this. Yeah. Well... Underneath there, there was a rug. It was, that rug that we stepped out on, it was a, a rug. There was blood on it. I had walked on it. And I was like, Gannon, we probably should just throw this away and find a new rug to put out here. So, you talk the about, rug you talk, What rug are you talking about again? So, okay. I, uh, so The one in the you, garage? Right. When Yo, you step yeah, down, yeah, yeah, yeah. when you step down, there was a rug. I said, we probably should just throw this away. I said, because we can always just get another piece or another rug, or I'll go to Dollar Tree and get a rug, whatever. I got you. All right, so that was that. All right, so then on the next section, it says, I replaced rug, blah, 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 blah. Okay, yep, bam. All right, and then it says, we came in house, and he immediately ran downstairs to the room. So then I kept going down there, because his door was locked. He said he was keeping Lena out, which, again, I didn't question, because they always get where one minute they want to play with each other, the next minute they're like, get out. Okay, so then I sat on the sofa to put on the Peloton shoes because I was going to ride the bike again because my friends had said they were going to redo a later time that we could do the bike. Gannon kept coming, coming in there saying, are you going to stay here? Are you going to stay down here? Are you going to stay down here? So I took it as if he was like excited I was going to stay down there and, you know, just be able to run around and, and, and do whatever. But then I had to go upstairs and help Lena, yada, yada, yada. So I got on my statement, it says I was back and forth, but came back when I heard a loud noise. So there was a loud noise that happened downstairs. So, of course, 
I run back downstairs and realize, or so I thought, was a box or something fell over in the storage room. Sound like something was really loud in the storage room, but I assumed that it was a box. Dan had his door locked, so I knocked on the door. Of course, I'm like, hello, because I hear a lot of noise. And so he opened and said I couldn't come in. And I was like laughing. I'm like, why? And he told me he was doing something. I don't remember what he told me he was building. I'm sure it was something about the toy cons or joy cons or whatever. I didn't think anything of it. Just, okay, he's building something, whatever. But there was a lot of noise, and he was in his room. So then, he said his stomach started hurting a little bit or whatever. So I told him to come upstairs. I had some special ice cream. I had these Kedia Light Pops. I had already went and bought them because I thought, you know, this time of year, this is when I got the bad cold last year, we'll take them. So I let him take the Pedia, you know, the Pedia Pops or whatever, and he took some Miralax. Mm. So that was, that, was, that was a normal day for Saturday. Like, you were already, you know, going on. You probably had already got the plane. We all laid down, yada, 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 right? Right, okay, right. So you, you're clear about Saturday. Yeah, yeah. All yeah. right. Christopher. Sunday. All right. Sunday, I... We talked to you in the morning, remember I told you, I sent you a few messages, and I was like, hey, we might go on a hike, whatever, everyone's going to get dressed, you know, then suddenly we saw the news about Kobe Bryant, so then of course, that delayed it, because I'm sitting on the sofa crying, trying to figure out, like, oh my gosh, Kobe died, is this true, remember I messaged you, we talked back and forth about it, whatever. Yeah, I had just gotten to the airport at uh, Lawton when you told me that. Right. So, Gannon had talked at all. I mean, Gannon didn't know who Kobe was. Or maybe he knew from, like, hearing it, but didn't really know who Kobe was. He just noticed that I was sitting there, like, crying, like, oh, my God, you know, like, upset. And we were sitting there talking about it. So, I was telling him that, hey, you know, Kobe has a lot of daughters. He only had sisters. You know, Gannon went over the whole, like, and if, I don't want you to think any of this is irrelevant because I want you to think of anything that I say that might have triggered something. Yeah, right, right. right. I'm, list- I'm listening very closely. Right. So then we were talking about the daughters, and I was like, yeah, he, he always wanted a boy, but he never could have a boy. He had daughters, blah, blah, blah. So then I let him in on a little secret, which I already told you over email what it was. Okay, I don't need to say it again. You already know. So me and him were talking about that he was kind of like really and i told him i said yeah you know like i lost a lot of babies i said it was kind of hard i said you want one thing and it don't ever happen you know i felt like i was in a situation to talk again about this because we were over here upset crying about Kobe. and so i was like i'm telling you because i know that you'll be able to pray and keep a secret and we were like you know kind of being silly about oh this is this is a secret we have between each other we'll tell daddy you know yada 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 so we sat there and talked about that for a little bit so then harley got called in the work so i was like crap we had everything packed ready to go on a hike had the getty had everything we were going to plan on staying for a while and then go get dinner well she got caught on the hike so we decided to take two hikes so this is where all this confusion comes with hike harley went hike harley not went so we took the dogs on the hike through the trails in Lorson Ranch. So if you leave out of our neighborhood, go out to the side, go up to the little whatever, you could take the dogs on a trail, come back, yada yada. So that's what we did first. Came back, Gannon had his water pack. I'm sure you saw the pictures online from Garner Gods that some other creeper people took. He had his water pack on his back, or whatever, so we got ready for round two. So hike two was Garden of the Gods. So then it says, Garden of the Gods was our hike two. So we went about two miles in, lots of talking about things. G asked me, did I know any of his mommy's friends from Coastal? It was a random thought process. So I just figured he was trying to be curious about it. I said, and, and did I remember Brian? And we laughed about some new friend named Mike too. So we were just having this conversation about whoever these people were. And I was like, I don't know anybody named Brian. And I don't know anybody named Mike too. I guess a new Mike or whatever. All right, so again, the stomach hurt, and he was, let's see, again, the stomach hurt, and most of the night, he had a stomach ache, and he tried to lay down and poop and stuff like that. Okay, so during this time, I'm messaging you, which you're probably tired, jet lag, whatever, and I was like, hey, again, the stomach's hurting, yada, yada, yada. Right. All right, because it happened regularly, you know, he would get, yeah. you know, whatever. So that's when he asked me about the bath salts. Still, hadn't talked to you about it yet, didn't know whatever. He, he took a bath, and then I gave him a bath bomb because I thought maybe he just wants to be clean. 
you know, whatever. Bath salt, bath salt. I didn't know any of that stuff. So then, next section. Never mind the little thing. Alright, so then the next section was. I don't remember exactly who took the bath first, but everybody had their baths. Everybody was doing their own thing. And Gannon was like, going back in his room. I said, okay. So then the, here's my next note. All right. Albert had grounded Gannon from the switch. From my understanding, he said he was still grounded, but he could get off, you know, the next day. He'd been in his room most of the night. I knocked on the door. And he said he was playing with Grayson. I ain't never heard of fucking Grayson before in my life. So again. Grayson? He said Grayson? He said Grayson. Okay. And so in my mind, I thought, who the hell is Grayson? But I didn't see anybody in the room. Obviously, I weren't, like, looking under beds or anything like that. Honestly, I thought, those kids in 11 still have imaginary friends? Or are they talking? Is he talking to somebody online? Because he's not supposed to have, you know, like, technology. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. Given the bit, huh? I said, right, yeah. Given the benefit of doubt, I didn't say anything else. I just said, oh, yeah, okay, cool. Tell Grayson I said hi. I laughed it off, went off about business, didn't see anything, okay? So later on, I don't know the exact approximate time, but I saw he was on the sofa. And I was, I was like, talking to him, I was like, oh, you want to sleep out here tonight? Or oh, what, downstairs, just, sofa? Yes. Yeah, I yes. got you, okay. So I'm like, talking to him about tonight, whatever, whatever. He told me his, that his Uncle Matt was going to visit. Okay, so I don't know who the hell Uncle Matt is. So I was just sitting there like, Okay, that's when it dawned into me that he had to be talking to someone on something because Grayson, I have no clue who it is. Matt, I have no clue who he is. Then I was like, this can't be characters in some game because it didn't sound like some game characters. I don't know Uncle Matt and I don't know Grayson. So he was talking about his Uncle Matt was going to visit. And I thought, okay, all right, buddy, you know, again, Trying to be sensitive to the fact that I know that he probably has friends, family on the other part of the country that maybe he was missing or whatever. Um, so it says, so again, I was like, boy. Okay, yeah, so again, that's my statement. So again, I was like, boy, you need to stay off that TikTok. You're being silly. Because I already told him he needs to stay off the TikTok. He was being silly. All right, so I went upstairs. And G was on the sofa to watch TV. I told him I'd come back later with him because he wanted to watch something on the show, but I had to get Lena ready, and I promised him I would let him stay up 30 minutes later. I said, you know, I was upstairs, get Lena ready for bed, yada, 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 yada. Well, then, out of nowhere, I, the alarm is going off. It didn't start with anything other than the alarm. Lena had laid down. I had went in the room. I was sitting there with the dogs. I don't remember exactly what I was doing, but I was doing something on Roku. And I hear the alarm go off. So I walk in the living room, hit the alarm code in. And I'm just like, dee 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 dee, alarm code. And it stopped. So I thought, who in the world, you know, was on the alarm code? Then it beeped again. And it kept going. And it, then it started fire. It was yelling louder. Fire. 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 And I'm just like, fire? And I look around. Don't see any flipping fire anywhere. So as this goes on, I'm like, okay, put the code in again, it stops. So I'm like, okay, I might get on the phone with ADT because something's wrong with this thing. Remember when we were out of town, the neighbor said she smelled gas and her thing was going off, but then they didn't find anything? Yeah, yeah, right. So I was thinking maybe it's something to do with this. So that was how my whole process was. So then at that point, I was like, the carbon, the main monoxide thing started beeping. And I ran in there where Lena was at, and I said, Lena, Lena, are you asleep? Because I knew, unless I was under some adrenaline rush, and this is not being mean, I wasn't going to be able to just pick get Lena up and yank her out of bed. But ha luckily, she hadn't fell asleep all the way. And I said, Lena, because I thought I was being crazy. I said, do you hear that? It said fire, right? She's like, yes. And so I grabbed Lena, run her outside, run her with the dogs, give her the keys to the truck, throw them in the truck. And I run back inside. Run back inside, still don't know anything. And then remember, oh, my God, Anna. Sorry that for a second I hadn't remembered that because I was trying to still figure out where in the heck a fire was at. So I run back downstairs and realized that there's smoke downstairs. I couldn't get 
I was coughing and choking and couldn't like get through the smoke cart. I run back to the garage. You had these little mouthpieces that you could put over your mouth. Yeah, yeah, dust protectors. Okay. Right, so I grabbed one of those, put it over my mouth, ran back downstairs, and when I ran back downstairs, again, I was still asleep, not knowing this was going on, and there was fire. I took the cover. There was a whole bunch of tons of cover that was inside that little tan thing and Gannon had on or whatever, and I just jumped on them. I don't know if that was the right thing to do. If it was the wrong thing to do, I'm sorry. But I just jumped on it and kept jumping on it, and, like, Gannon was wrapped in one of the covers, so Gannon did burn his arms. It wasn't bad. It was like a... Almost like, you know how you get a little bit of boil on it and it's just like underneath the skin, but as long as y'all peel it, it's fine. Yeah, but, but, but a, hey, Tisha, which arm, was it both arms or like this inside? I mean, but like, how was it? So, because I remember we talked about that before a little bit, but uh, you never, we never got Honestly, it. I feel like it was across the arms. Like, I feel like it was, and I told the investigators this. I said, and, and I don't want to skip to this part and miss this part, but remember, remind me that say this later i told the investigators later that i said i probably should have looked a little more in depth at his arm what if he's hurt could, yeah because because it could have been you know like he wasn't complaining like oh it's hurting he wasn't saying anything along those lines but i should have looked a little bit more in depth but honestly we ran so we ran out i'm sure they got the footage of us me running out first because Gana was grabbing his cover, running out behind there, because he was well, cold. What, hey, what time was this so we can, I can maybe tell somebody to look at the footage? Well, I mean, uh, I, I told them originally, I don't have access to the ADT now, but I yeah, told yeah. them originally, because the ADT said it had an alert for fire. So I would imagine whenever that alert went off from ADT, it okay. would have been... Within that, within that few minutes. Yeah, like fine, I got you. Fi 15 minutes. Um, hey, so, hey, tell me about it. Uh, so, I'm really concerned about these burns because, you know, these freaking hurt. Like, what? Right. What, what, what are they big? Were they small? Like, what was it? Was it, was it from the candle wax or what? Let, let me get to that part. It's not going to worry you in a minute when I get to that part. Okay, because okay, I'm freaking out right now. Cause <laughs> okay, I understand. So, when he runs to the car... He runs in because I'm running. He's running behind me. I jump in your truck. The only reason jumping in your truck is the keys were laying there. Okay. So I jump in your truck. He jumps in on the driver's side. He's screaming, crying, whatever. Lane is in the back seat with the two dogs. We crank your we turn your truck on and we drive the hell off. Don't ask me why we drove off. I was freaked out because I was like, oh my god, like. It was the carbon, it was the smoke was more, more scary and terrifying than actually the fire. So, okay. we had to, all we did was we drove around the block, and I kind of had to be like, okay, what do I do? A, do I need to call the police department? B, does anybody need medical attention? So then, we go back in the house, Lena's freaked out, I put Lena in our bed. I said, whoa, whoa, so, so you drove around for how long and then came back? No, I drove around the block. Like, oh, I'm sorry. Wando, I didn't hear around. that. Yeah, I didn't hear that. I'm sorry. Yeah, I drove around like the block, like Wando, that area, yeah, yeah. whatever. I know. Back. Pull back up in the drive. You didn't have much gas because I hadn't put gas in your car yet. You didn't have much gas. Right. So, uh, my my process of driving was thinking, oh my god, like I, I was in shock. So I pulled back in the driveway and parked. We all get back out, go inside. Lena goes, Lena's freaking out, crying. We're both, Lena and I are standing there looking at Gannon. I didn't, at that point in time, I didn't see anything on his hands, arms, or anything other than take your hand where you're holding your phone and look on the insides where the edges are. That part right there had little bubbly spots, okay? So they had bubbly spots on both sides of his arm. And I think that was from when he grabbed the cover and I was trying to grab him up and he came down with me with the cover because he was like latched onto the cover. Yeah, yeah. When I was, and I was trying to grab the whole cover to put out the fire. So from the inner parts of his arm had these little bubble spots. Which so so you time, said, but you said both sides or is it just the inner parts? I just trying to, because this might be key information. Both, like both sides, left arm, right arm. I got and you. Okay. Inner, so both sides of both arms? From what I remember, 
remember both sides yeah. of both arms because he had when when Daniel was laying there and I grabbed him to get him up. Okay, because I remember it was that uh Oh god it, it was one of the covers. I grabbed him to get him up, whatever. He he gets in the car, whatever, we're talking, he's explaining to me that he thought I was coming and he was grounded from the switch. So he thought I was coming and when he thought I was coming he knocked over the candle. Okay. Because apparently he was playing the switch when he shouldn't have been playing it, which is fine. Was the know? but he had the candle on the couch, I guess, right? No, he had uh. the candle sitting on some kind of little, uh, that little white thing that was sitting next to the couch. Okay. Oh, I got I you. I got you. I got you. Right. So I don't know if the candle fell over. I don't know. I know that when I got there, there was a fire, and it was on his cover. So I was trying to rip the cover out of his hands to get him up and like jump on the fire. They have pictures of where there's burn marks on my elbow where I jumped on the fire. So we get in the car and he's crying and screaming and telling me he's sorry and he don't want to get in trouble because of the switch. He was on the switch and he shouldn't have been on the switch. And so we drive around the block, and I'm like, it's okay, it's okay, we'll, we'll, we'll figure it out. Honestly, I flipping lost my mind, because I thought in my mind, like, had I not gotten downstairs when I did, had I not heard it, or the alarm system, or carbon monoxide, or whatever, if that fire would have hit that couch, I don't know that I could have gotten again. And that was my, that was my biggest thing that my brain was sitting there, like, freaked out on. Come back inside. Lena's terrified. I said, Lena, go lay in the bed. She's laying in the bedroom. Dan was like, he, he doesn't want to go back to his room. I said, okay, will you lay in Lena's bed? He said, yes. He started to say he was cold and had a little bit of shivers. And so I was like, Gannon, I took him and put more clothes on top of him now. Blame it on me. Whatever. I didn't take his clothes off to go through anything, but I asked him, was he hurting? And was anything else, whatever. He told me it was just his arms. So I didn't see anything that would have thrown a flag that I had to be like, oh my God, emergency or, or anything like that. I didn't see anything like that. But if his so, arms was bubbling, that's not an emergency? Well, it, it, it hadn't broke skin. Like, it was just like underneath. It hadn't broke skin or whatever. Okay. And so All right. All right. In, my, in my mind, I'm like, okay let, let's evaluate the situation you know tomorrow and see or whatever it wasn't burn burn marks like carpet burn or like you know anything like that it, it was bubbly and i told them from that i said i honestly i probably could have you know got him in the car and said hey can you just check this out to make sure because i it wasn't in my mind, in his arms, I didn't see it as a as a bad thing. I just knew he was like, it's not hurting. We put aloe on it, and I assumed, okay. So then we put on the long sleeve shirt on him because he said he was kind of cold or whatever it was. He lays down in Lena's bed. Lena sleeps in my bed, our bed. Harley comes home. I go in, and I'm telling Like, I had already prepped Harley for what was going on. I was like, hey, don't panic when you get here. I was like, there's smoke, the house is smoky, Gannon, this happened, yada, 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 yada. Lena was scared to go to sleep, so we both went in there and checked on Gannon. We went in there, we gave him water in, in Lena's bed. We gave him water, we set him up, we like, are you okay? He was more scared of anything. And so I can, of course, I was like, whoops, you know, someone said something because I said sell the couch. I wasn't talking about sell the couch to fix the daggone carpet. I was talking about, like, I would get rid of that couch and get a new couch. Don't panic. Like, my point was, honestly, I wasn't even going to tell you because I was like, Daniel was scared of being grounded in here. You know, and I was like, I'll buy a new couch. We'll fix the couch. We'll, we'll replace everything in here. Don't worry about it. You know, and that was my whole point. As long as you promised me you didn't do it on purpose, like you didn't purposely do this to hurt yourself or hurt somebody, we will fix it. And that's how we ended on Sunday. So, Gannon was still like, you know, upset. He was not only emotional about the situation, his stomach was hurting. So, that's where we were at with Sunday. Okay. If you can you give me one second to pee? Yeah. Oh, 
Okay, I'm back. Alright. Alright, so, later on in the night, Dana woke me up a few times. He said his stomach was getting worse. She got in poop jet. I messaged you, but you were already asleep. And I was like, hey, can Dana, Dana wants to know if he can stay out of school tomorrow. He's scared of pooping in his pants. I think you probably were still asleep. You might didn't get it until the next day, which is not your fault, my fault. It was time zone and tiredness and whatever. Yeah. Right. I stayed up. I stayed up with him a few times in the bathroom. A few times in the bathroom. And finally, I was like, okay. And I wrote you back. I said, I'm just gonna make the decision that Gana can stay at home tomorrow because he is so terrified about pooping in his pants or whatever. So the next morning, I called. Excuse me. I called the nurse's line and I asked the nurse's line about, you know, about his stomach and giving a mirror light and yada yada yada. You talking about the Tricare nurse's line? No, the urgent care nurse's line right in front of uh, Fountain and whatever that road is. I got you. So I called them and I said, "Hey, I said I know typically people are constipated. You give a mirror light, yada yada yada." But he hasn't really went to the bathroom. He has blood coming out of his butt. And so they just basically explained to do the best she could to get him to pass. And if not, then we needed to call our care provider, whatever. People started beating me up over that, saying you didn't need to have a referral to do this. That wasn't what I was trying to say. I was trying to make the point of does the boy need to have, like, you know, anything done? Or can I just give him, like, an enema or something like that? Because I already talked to him about that. So if this don't work, you want me to give him, like, an enema or something? Because it was a big old turd he was trying to get out. Yeah. All right. So then, that morning, we were like, I said, Gannon, I said, I'm going to stay at home with you today because I don't want you to stay by yourself. Now, remember, we've let Gannon stay by himself. He's been responsible, whatever. But in this state, I, like as in his state that he was in, not feeling well, stomach hurting, bubbling a little bit here and there, and being embarrassed, I made a decision that it was not okay for him to stay there by himself if he was sick. If he's on normal terms, taking care of his sister, playing the switch, doing his thing, then that's fine. But I said, Gannon, you're going to need to go with me. I said, there's a few things I need to handle today. Guess me what? And I was going to look at a bike for you from this guy that was on Craigslist because he had this bike, like a, um, a touring bike. And I said, yeah. Dan, you want to go with me to look at this touring bike or whatever? And that was Monday? Wait. Yes. Hey, so Wait. did you did you give him Miralax or, or the Enema or anything like yes. that? What else did you give him? Hold on. I have in this notes what day I gave him Miralax. All right. Uh, trying to prove. Um, I regularly took well, that was the bath salts day right to Saturday he had Miralax on Saturday yeah here it is I gave him ice cream and said it said it had special stuff because I was telling him it was, it was really those like Pedialyte ice cream yeah, you know yeah, what I'm right, talking about right. yeah, yeah. I told him it was special and took Miralax that was on Saturday so well, hold on let me I'm trying to just because you know obviously I Worried to death about his little arms. Um, did you rub any cream on it or give him anything for the pain or did he pain medicine or anything like that right. to help him? I, I didn't give him pain medicine because I didn't have any pain medicine to give. What I gave him was the aloe that was in our bathroom, that green aloe. I took the aloe. We even made like a little silly joke about it because he wasn't hurting. Remember how I was wrapping Sadie up with the little thing? Yeah. I wrapped it around his arms too. And like, oh, oh, yeah, little. yeah, the band, uh, little yeah. bandages right. or whatever. Right, so I put the aloe, the green aloe on it, and I said, you can, well, do you like Sadie? And we laughed about it. Yeah. He was totally coherent, laughing about it, you know, being, yes, it hurt a little bit, but being silly about it on his arms. So that. So he, like, you didn't give him any, like, children's Tylenol or anything? I didn't give him any kind of, he, he wasn't saying that he was hurting in any kind of pain to give him any kind of Tylenol to give him anything at all. And if, I, if you feel like that that would have been a lapse in judgment on my part, then I'm sorry. No, I mean, I, no, I'm just I'm just trying to sort through it. I know I know how both of them are about you know every time they scrape their finger or something they want a band aid. So I would just assume that if his arm was all bubbled up, did his arm did his arm stay bubbled up like until the next day, or was that just did that go down that night, or how like that's so, that's worrying me too. Okay, so to get to the next part, 
Ganon started to kill it. Wait, like when? When would how? When did he start so to kill it? Ganon started to kill it because I guess he was either asleep. I don't know. Anxious. I don't know. Monday he started to kill it. Like okay. Like like kill his skin. Yeah, like Monday morning or whatever. Right, and I again, I swear to Jesus, told detectives this. I said he started to kill it. And when he started to peel it, it had like, uh, I don't want to say like, not gooey stuff or whatever, but it's almost like it was like popping it type thing. And I said Oh, again, yeah, like a, like, a, like a blister or something? Right. Yeah. I said to Gannon, I said, listen, I said, if it gets worse, we're going to drive straight. Okay. And that was already the plan. That's why I didn't go to school. I said, if it gets worse... After I put all that stuff on there, whatever. I'm not that type of person where something happens immediately, run to the hospital. You know, you and I have had that conversation before where you would say, like, every little thing later ran to the hospital. I was trying to evaluate it to see, as long as he was talking fine, normal, acting normal, I didn't see at that point in time that he was under any kind of pain. I got you. Or he didn't say that to me. Okay, Again, all right, all right, all right. If that, was, if that was a lapse in judgment on my part, I apologize. But... He started to peel it because, you know, obviously he starts to peel things and pick things. So, along with peeling that, he started peeling his fingernails. So, and I'm like, that morning, I sent you a picture of Gannon laying in bed on Monday morning to your phone. Yeah, right, right. So, Gannon was laying in the bed, whatever. I went back in there, checked on him, gave him some more water, made him drink some more Pedialyte because he wasn't eating because he was so upset. And he, then that's when I noticed he started peeling things, like, on his arm. And I said, and, the, and at that point in time, which I told you, like, I told them, Gannon had blood that was on his arm and on the side of his wall. I guess from sleeping through the night, whatever it was, peeling it. Because we toted him back down to his room after Lena decided to go back to bed. On so, the you, know, si you said on the side of his wall? You never told me that. No, I told detectives this. Oh. You never told you never talked to me about this. Okay, fair, fine. That, I mean, I mean, I'm just. This is new. I've never heard that before. So now I'm okay, even well, more worried about him. So they should have told you this. So then I, I, I went in there that morning, sent you a picture. I said, Gannon, why do you have blood on your wall? I was like, it was, it wasn't a lot. Don't panic. It wasn't like. Oh, so it wasn't like a lot, like all over the place. It was just like little streaks or something. Right. Oh. And I said, I said, Gannon. I says, did you peel those things? Yes, he did. I said, okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to re-bandage your arm. I says, and if you're feeling bad or it starts bleeding, you get a fever, anything like that. I says, we're, as soon as we, because I was going to go talk to the man about the bike. Right. I says, I don't have to go there first. You want to go to the hospital now? Of course, maybe I shouldn't have asked the kid that. But based on my judgment and what I was seeing with him, I didn't think that he needed to go right away. We went on about our business, and I said, if you start to feel any pain or hurt or whatever like that, we'll just drive to the base, we'll explain to them what happened with the fire, we monitored it through the night, so on and so on. That, that was our intent, that, like, that was the plan the whole time, everything, nothing, nothing wavered from doing that at all. And asked me questions. He was just like, "Why does this happen to me? Why do I always get hurt?" Because you know he had hurt his foot on the on the boards outside. And I said, "Again, we're gonna figure all of it out. Don't worry about it. We will replace it." Okay. So Monday morning, after all this, I was like, "Again, we're gonna go find," which I probably shouldn't have said to him that he where well, he would have not thought that it was on him. But I said, "We're gonna go find someone to replace the carpet." I says, and then we'll get it fixed. We won't worry about it. We'll monitor your arm through the day. Yada, yada, yada. I said, we're going to go get some coffee. Just hang out. And I said, there were some things I need to get for the pet store, and we need to go meet the guy about the bike. Because the plan was, that's the reason we drove the truck, because if I end up blocking the bike, I was going to put the bike on the back of the truck. Yeah, yeah, I got you. Bannon also knows that when we left, we took my... Uh, softball bag, probably softball bag with bat and stuff like that in it, helmet, because then I was asking him, did he want to stop by to look at those hockey skates? So we took any of that old equipment that I had and we loaded it in the back of the truck, which was the, uh, you know, the long eastern bag I have, 
Yeah, yeah. So you took Harley's bag? Harley's bag, because she don't use that bag. That little book, that the bag. little book bag, the softball bag that's like a book bag. Right. Oh, so oh, oh. So we were going to take it to that sports place and see if they did like trades, whatever, whatever, yeah, whatever. Yeah. And we, we were going to surprise Lena when she got home if I could got him two new things to skate or hockey skates or whatever. Cause you talking about play? You talking about played against sports over there right. that we went to? That, that's why we were so far across town. I uh, gotcha. All right. So that was our plan for Monday. Go to play it against sports. Get some coffee. We need to get gas. And we were going to monitor his arm along the way. Go check on the thing about the bike. Right. So we go to, all, you know, drive around. We go. I think we. I think we went to Dunkin' Donuts first, and then the gas store, or it might have been vice versa. What, like over over store. by our house, Dunkin' Donuts? Right. We went to Dunkin' Donuts by our house. They Dunkin' Donuts Sharon lady already released the video of us going there. You can see my arm reach out the window. Fucking grab. Sorry, I didn't mean to say effing. I'm just over all this. Grab the coffee out the car. Then I turned around because I was about to get Gannon a frappuccino, but he said he didn't want any. So then we drive off from the Dunkin' Donuts. So then we drive off from the Dunkin' Donuts, and we go up. I turned 87 somehow, but meant to turn on 25. Needless to say, I went up the bottom. 80, you mean 85? Yeah, 85, 87. Oh, yeah. uh, okay, all right. So then I went up towards Nevada, which is where, like, Holly gets her eyelashes done, that type of area. Well, like, past, you, wait, you talking about past Walmart and all that? Like, not, not towards Fountain, the other way, right? Oh, where they, the roads, okay, remember where we went to the recycle at before and the road split? Yeah, way down there close to, yeah, okay. Oh, but that's, yeah. yeah, that's that's towards Walmart. Turn. Yeah, okay, I got you. Okay, so that's the route that I take, which I'm sure they have because I'm not hiding anything from them or the GPS that I took. So I went that way <clears throat> first, and I realized I was like, oh, crap. I was like, I probably should have got on the other exit because I really didn't know. I, a lot lately I've been trying to find my way around, like what exits to get off of, things like that. So I get off and realize, like, oh, this is the way to where we went to the recycle thing at. So I just kept driving and ends up making a curve and turning you back to 25, Nevada, and all that. And I was like, oh, there's the Petco. I was going to go to PetSmart. But we ended up Petco, so whatever, same thing. Petco? So, the, you went to Petco, like, way over there? That's the only Petco there is. I don't I don't know. I'll, the only one I know is the one we went to by Target that one day. That's, so I'm at your Harley's, Harley's work? Yeah, that's Pet Smart, though, isn't it? Right, that's yeah, what I was saying. I, I got I was you. Needed, I was needing to go to Pet Smart, but I went to Petco. I got you. So I go to Petco, and I walk inside, and I want to stand in the car playing the Switch. He was like, you want to stay in the car playing the Switch. Again, Colorado law is he can sit in the car at 11 years old. Oh, so he had it. So he, oh, he took a Switch with him. Right. Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Yes. He had his Switch playing his Switch in the back of the car. You're talking about the truck, right? Yeah, I mean, I'm sorry, in the back of the truck. Okay. So he was playing his Switch in the back of the truck. Well, I went in the first time and... Yada yada yada. I was going in because Sadie has been having like these things. I don't even know what it is. She needs to get her vet paperwork so I can get her checked. I didn't know girl dogs had like periods or like stuff come out. I didn't know this. So I walked in and found these little pads that they had. And I'm like looking at them, whatever, whatever, whatever. And I set the phone down because I'm like, and my mind is so blown that dogs have this. So I'm like looking at it, freaking out, thinking, okay, should I get these? Or should I just call the pet, you know, the vet? Maybe it's just something weird coming out of her, her body parts or, or something like that, whatever it may be. So then, go back up to the front, look around. I look out the door several times. And these people I know have said, she was suspicious looking out the door. I was looking out the front door just to make sure nobody was at the truck because Gana was in it. That's all. It was just, he was in the truck, and, I mean, what if he needed to get out pee, or, you know, whatever. That was the only reason I kept walking back to the freaking front door just to make sure he was fine, because he was in the truck. So then, I get three outfits, God forbid I got three outfits and only have two dogs, because, of course, this is what these people have talked about. I got three outfits, checked out, walked out, got in the car. From there, we were going to go to the play against sports. But, but wait a minute, why were you so? 
I'm just I'm kind of confused because like you said you're worried about him getting out, but like you know we've gone to the gas station and like he's never tried to get out of the car. So what what was I I, I, I don't know maybe that's nothing, but what made you because freak out that day? I wasn't parked on the front row. I was I was parked a little bit off. So like if oh. he needed to get out and use the bathroom or. He was looking for me or whatever. Okay, all right, what? yeah. I was just, that kind of was weird because, like, he's usually, you know, he does what we tell him, stays in the car. But anyways, go ahead. Right, but not Albert. Exactly, he does. Just like I told you, he could have stayed at home on a normal basis. But he wasn't feeling well. Yeah, so I was fine, like, fine, I got you. What if, he, what if he had to poo? You know, whatever. Yeah. I was just trying to be a good parent. That's it. It wasn't no... I know, it's I know. Just looking in the car. I got you. I, I, it just was weird that you said that, but it's okay. I'll just go ahead. So I went on, got the things checked out, left. I don't remember if we were stopped at another store in between there or what. Uh, we were headed to go to the Planet Again Sports, and we were headed to go to go talk to the dude about the bike. Well, they had my phone, so they can see that the guy right in the back about the bike with the pictures. And I was asking about prices and yada, 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 yada. And I was like, can you, s I didn't want to go to the man's house with the bike, you know, without like have, I wanted it to be legit, you know. I got me in the car and I only had me in the car, I got Gannon in the car. So I thought, I need to, you know what I'm saying, like, I need to make sure this is legit. So I'm like, send me a picture of the bike, can you call, can you whatever. And like, he wasn't acting like... He was wanting to, like, give me information that he could meet me at a safe spot to go look at the bike. So you, didn't have, you weren't going to go to his house or something? You, he was just going to meet you in general? I told him on my messages that I didn't want to just go to some random person's house. And that's probably why yeah. they are looking at this whole Douglas County thing. Because he lived almost at Douglas County. Okay, yeah, that sounded, yeah, that does sound sketchy. You probably, that was probably a good decision, so... So, again, I've been an open book with them. They took my GPS and everything. I was, I got, we got to Douglas County, and I was talking, me and Gannon were talking about it, and he was like, do you know this guy? And I was well, like, well, not so, really. Hey, I missed the part. You said, uh, so you went to Petco, but you said you were going to play it again. Did you never go to play it again? I forgot. No, we didn't never make it to play it again. We were, that was on our agenda, but we were trying to go for the bike first. Oh, that was the part. okay, 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 okay. Sorry, bike, sorry, I got confused. I'm sorry. It's okay. The bike thing was a priority first. Okay? So, I was going to go out to meet the guy with the bike, and I, somehow they have to have, they have my email. They subpoenaed all that. They can see that information coming from the Craigslist. Okay? Oh, it was so, Craigslist. So, someone had something on Craigslist. Oh, man, that's sketchy, isn't it? Yeah. I, you know I don't trust that shit. You there? Yeah, yeah, but you went and bought wood and stuff on Craigslist. Yeah, I mean, for you to do it, I, and Craigslist, I, I never trust that shit because they always have those sketchy people doing, uh, you know, I don't know, stupid stuff like meet and greets and stuff. You always told me about that, remember? Yeah, but like, this, this was just a bike for sale. Okay, I'm just saying, I'm, you know, I'm worried about you and my son's safety. That's what I'm, you know, that's... That's my point. That's why I realized, I said, well, you know, we probably, we rode through, okay, so my, when you go up Palmer Lake heading to Douglas County or whatever, we went that way. It was supposed to be that the guy had a warehouse somewhere between the Palmer Lake area, whatever. What, a so warehouse again, of bikes or something? He said he had a couple bikes that he used to do riding and touring oh, okay. and stuff like that. Like those bikes I was looking at doing those rides like through Alaska or whatever? Right. Okay. So, I get out on this road. So, if you're on, I, I, I want to say it's exit 165 or 163. Okay. I think that's what I want to say the exit was. Oh, on, 20, yeah. on 25? Right. Okay. okay. Yeah. So, you know how you're going to, before you get to Castle, oh, it's where you. It's where we went to take the. Um, remember how if traffic is backed up, you can take that back road. Oh yeah, before you get to like 182 where the outlets are or whatever. You can take that back road yeah, and it yeah. takes you back out to Castle Rock. Yeah, I got you. Okay, 
Okay, so it was off that, but to the right side, not to the bougie side where, like, the boonies and stuff was at. It was off that way to the right side. So I originally got off, and again, they can see this on my GPS. I got off, I went left, and went down that little hill where the little people were at. And I thought, this can't be the right way, because he was saying something about signs and all this. Turned around at the little, I, I don't know, woods or whatever, came back up. Went across straight and realized it was on that right side. I think it's called like Palmer Lake or something like that. Supposed to be looking for this place. Still didn't see it. And then it ended up being like all mountainy and dark. I say dark. It wasn't dark in the day, but like, you know. Yeah, like, dark like woods and stuff. Yeah. So we turned around, left out of there, and I was like, well, this doesn't even look too great. Again, have them go search that area all they want to. They're barking up the fucking wrong tree because all we did was went through there looking around and trying to figure out where this warehouse was supposedly at. So you and were we in, the, in the truck or out of the truck? We're in the truck. Oh, I'm, you had me worried. I'm like, you're out of the truck in the woods looking for a warehouse? No, it was just driving through there. It was like down, around, up, around. You know, Mount Colorado has all these mountains and shit like that. So I came back out, got back on 25 and was like, crap. I was like, I don't even, I don't even like think that was a good place. Then Gannon was like, well, Gannon was like, why can't we just go buy it in the store? Don't they have them at Walmart? You know, and so we're like talking. I was like, yeah, I'll just figure out another place to get a bike. Because the whole thing was, I was going to buy you the bike and surprise you for Valentine's Day for it. That right. was like the whole, the whole shebang. Yeah, I would so love this, that for sure. So at this point, we never got to play it against sports because it was getting, it was approaching the time that we needed to be headed back. Okay. So I said, again, I'll just come back and do, you know, go to play it again, sports again later. Don't worry about it. Your daddy and I have been talking about getting hockey sticks. So we come back up, heading back towards the house uh, because, um, you know, we had to get back for Lena. Oh, I forgot to tell you a point that we left that day because I put my notebook down. Let me go back to this on Monday. Okay. On Monday, when Gannon and I left, we found someone in the neighborhood who was working for the Lorson Ranch people. So this is why I came back to you and said I didn't think it was the carpet guy. Or I say working for the Lorson Ranch people. I don't know who he worked for. Like but whatever that, Emory Homes or whatever it's called. He was, he was working for the home company. I approached the guy to ask him, could he go fix the carpet? You know, that that was before we even hit the road. So that was before so, Dunkin' Donuts and all that? Yes. Oh, oh. Yeah, I meant to tell you this. So it was before Dunkin' Donuts and all that. So I gave him the I gave him the garage code, because he apparently worked for the company or whatever, whatever. I gave him the garage code and told him I had money sitting on the counter because Harley was going to... I remember I've been playing those lottery ticket things. Yeah, I, was, yeah. I had tens because I was like, well... He can just have those tens, and I'll get more money from that. That's why I have one on the lottery. Well, that's why I thought that he was, that the carpet person, you know, had access to the house, whatever, whatever. Come to find out later on, he didn't even make it there. But I'll get to that point when we get there. But but why why would you give him access to the house? Well, because he was a yeah, but, contract, uh, like part of the people, and Gana was with me. Okay, all right, all right, all right. So I didn't think anything was a threat if the children were with me. Yeah, I got you. And someone was going to come in or whatever. But that, you know, you know how I am about that stuff too, right? I mean, that's. I, anyways, anyways, I don't want to. I don't want to stop you. Just that kind of worries me there. But go ahead. You there? I didn't do give him a code to be any kind of whatever. No, no, I mean, no. I'm I just, was trying to get the carpet fixed so the boy could not be so upset. I got it. I'm just, I just don't like, you know how I am. I don't like have people having access to our house and stuff. But um, whatever, just just go on because I don't think that's a, a big deal. So. Anyway, so back to what I was sorry, saying. Sorry, I want to make sure I, lo I didn't leave out that point. Okay. Um, so... Fast forwarding on, you know, we have to hurry up. We have to get back because I knew that Lena would be coming home at some point. The original plan was we were going to go pick Lena up. That was the original plan. They'd be like, hey, we're going to go eat sushi tonight because everybody's been talking about eating sushi. Yeah, yeah. 
Dana wanted to stay at home. And I was like, no, Dana, you probably shouldn't stay at home. You still aren't feeling the best, whatever. You should not stay at home. I said, so we're all going to eat sushi. If you don't like it, you can just get rice, chicken, yada, yada. So that was our plan for the day. We get home about, I don't know what time the alarm got set off. 2.30, 2.45, whatever the bull crap is. Okay. Well, I noticed that during the time frame, I set the alarm to alarm away. And I have it from the ADT okay. when we left. Somehow, at, during some point, the alarm changed from alarm away to alarm stay. What, I but, but, it, what, but what point? If you, I mean, I had all this, and which was on my phone that they took. Oh, okay. All right, all right, all right. So, I called ADT, and I said, hey, what are the steps in alarm going to arm away to arm stay? And they said, they instructed me that if the door was not open with a sensor... It could have been that you accidentally set the house to alarm away and it would have went to arm stay if it noticed movement that was already in the house. Oh, I got you. Right. But there's a sensor on the garage door. Right. Okay. So keep this in mind. Prior there's a to sensor water. on the garage door? I know. On the door coming in from the garage, there's no sensor. No, you said there was. So there, Yeah, there's not. I didn't think there was. Yeah, I was saying there's no sensor. Oh. I might have said it's really fast. I was saying there's no oh, sensor. Oh, okay, sorry, the sorry. I, mis I misunderstood you. I'm sorry. So, either you can come in, you can set the alarm to arm away, and you can walk in through the garage, and it will immediately go to arm stay. Or you can set it arm away, and one of the dogs move, and it will go to arm stay. As long as that back glass door wasn't triggered, and that front door wasn't triggered, it will not change. Okay. So keep, right. keep that keep that in mind. Okay. So this whole thing about your neighbor, he got paid five thousand dollars to release this video. It's a proven fact. Okay. It's already been looked at by tens of thousands of people, and it's been investigated that Gannon Stout got out the other side of the vehicle. Okay. okay. All right. Shadows, movements, infrared, whatever you want to call it. Again and got out the other side of the vehicle. Okay. So you, okay, all right. So he's home. Ahead, so he's, he's home with you now, is what you're saying. At, right. the, at this point in the timeline. Yeah. So it's like maybe two forty-five or two thirty. I'm not sure exactly, but in that time frame before Lena got home, you know, I'm getting out, going in the house, or whatever. Gannon goes in, and Gannon goes straight to his room. I go upstairs because I was like, had wanted to try to get on that Peloton the other night. Didn't get a chance to. Put my headphones on. Yada, yada, yada. So I'm in there. Gannon had asked me was he, that you said that he could go with a friend. You then text me. I don't know exactly what time, but at some point in time, you had told me, <clears throat> don't let Gannon go with a friend or something, something, something. Yeah, right. Gannon came back and said that you said he could go with a friend and come back later tonight. Again, I said, your daddy said you can play with your friends in a neighborhood, but you cannot go with some friend in some car or whatever it may be. Put my headphones back on. That, that was where this gets where I have completely parts of the information and not parts of the information. I hear another loud noise downstairs. Not even about, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes later, maybe 20 minutes. Yes. But I thought you, uh, were, I thought you said you were doing the Peloton. No, I said I'd been wanting to go back and get oh. on the Peloton because I didn't get to oh, okay. the other night. So I had my headphones on and I was kind of like trying to get in the pre-workout mode or whatever you want to call it. Because my goal had been trying to get on the Peloton every day. Yeah, right. So, so then I heard another noise again and I was like, I pulled them off my ears. I know, I know they're noise counseling, but I also am not stupid. I don't wear them all the way on my ears because they freaking hurt. And I was like, Gannon, didn't hear anything. And I just thought he's down there bumping and plopping and, you know, doing his thing, whatever it may be. 
still sitting there just chilling doing whatever heard another heard another loud noise and i thought okay this is it like i thought he was stomping around you know doing crazy things whatever whatever he's supposed to be going to go play with a friend when i walked downstairs at that original point in time i thought that guy was the carpet guy similarities i didn't really remember exactly what he looked like but i remember some of the details now fast forward you'll hear me say night after night after night after night i dreamed of different things that have added detail to this i thought it was the carpet guy because there was carpet everywhere boxes you name it that was the loud noises that i heard next thing i know i'm out blacked out and which i told you this yeah 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 so, so what but what i'm concerned about with that is did he take all those boxes and carpet with him when he left <laughs> The carpet was already in the house. Oh, but what about like, all the... I, what, I just I, don't remember seeing any of that stuff when we got there. Did you clean... Is that part of what you cleaned up or whatever? No, the the carpet was... I saw it there when the police watched me take my stuff out. Okay, but you also mentioned he had a bunch of boxes and stuff. But, I mean, it's, it's not a big deal. I was just wondering I cause, said there was boxes, like, laid out everywhere. Right. Like I told the detectives, I thought we were getting robbed. Okay, I got now, you. I thought, that was the whole point of boxes was to get rocked okay all right on on gannon's table which i'm sure there had to be if it was swiped correctly i hit my head on the back of gannon's table like hard okay. on the back of gannon's table what what table the, the one i made him yes like the back of it up against the wall no as in the back of my head and there was the table right there oh okay i thought you said the back of the table i'm sorry no, the back of my head on his table. Okay. So from there, a lot of it was a blur because I hit my head. I got you. I, I just remember certain pieces here and there. I remember Gannon running and like jumping on the guy who I thought at the time was the carpet guy. And I thought we were about to get robbed. I just remember bits and pieces like that, trying to push him off. And all I remember now that I sit back and remember, like, play it in my head again, play it in my head again, play it in my head again. It was a very calm conversation with Gannon and this person. I just remember him asking questions, the same questions he asked me, they were talking about. And I don't, do you have, who do you have your own speakerphone with? Because I know you do. What are you talking about, Tisha? Who is listening to my conversation? Me and you. I'm trying to figure out, like okay. I told you the whole so, time, the truth. I just want the during, truth. Okay, so during that time, I heard that same thing that Gannon asked me about knowing his mommy. Why do you think I've been adamant about you saying to you, oh my God, there's a piece that we're not putting together that we're not missing there's something different i don't know how to put it all together but gannon knew something about something and all i kept hearing him say was do you know where uncle matt is at i don't even know who uncle matt is yeah i never heard it the only matt i know of is uh what's her name um your sister well that would be his uncle and he wouldn't know him yeah that's what i'm saying that's why when you said that 20 minutes ago or whatever I just like I had never heard no Uncle Matt so when I woke up and like out of this state of confusion going crazy whatever was going on I remember Gannon saying he would be back later okay like the man, Uncle Matt saying he'd be back later Gannon said he would be back later oh Gannon said okay alright so in my mind I'm like did I really like, like, what the fuck just went on, okay? Yeah. Hit my head twice, had to fight off some dude that I explained to them and gave them a subscription, description of the whole entire time, okay? I have been adamant about this and about finding this person. Is that the and Mexican guy you were talking, you told me about the Mexican guy? She was dark skinned and I say Mexican because I assume T him Tisha, being Tisha, you said you just said she. You mean he was dark skinned? I never said she, I said he. Okay, alright. I'm sorry. It sounded like you said she. I'm hearing things again. I'm sorry. 
Mexican guy, okay? I gave him the description of that, but to me, dark skinned, I mean, their own stepfather could look Mexican. Are you talking about Mike? Right, and in that time, it wasn't Mike, obviously, but in that time frame, I'm trying to figure out first, and is this real life? Because I was totally, completely in shock what was going on. I thought we were going to get robbed. I thought they were about to take everything. I thought someone was trying to hurt Gannon. I hit the head. I didn't really know back and forth what to do. I was a little bit out of it. I'm not even going to lie. My body system was already weak because you know how it is in the first four to five weeks of being pregnant. That's my, my mind was completely fucking gone. And my mind jumped up after everything. And I said, okay, Gannon's going to be back. Gannon's going to be back. I paced up and down the stairs. During that so time So, babe, frame, babe, babe, hold on. You, Why did you tell me you got raped and now you're not telling me you got raped? Do you think I want to tell you what a man done to me? I mean, I, but, I, but uh, like that first day I told you, I would do everything and within my power to protect you and, and get you the help you need for that. But, but that's, and I a, went but for that's that. a key part of the story. I'm just trying to make sure I'm getting it straight. And I went for, and I went for that. Okay. And that's not something that I want to be like. Do you think I want that blasted on El Paso News? Uh, okay, I, but this is me. I'm just trying to help you in this situation. Make sure you got what you need from that. But if I don't want to, I don't want to get you worked up. So go ahead. The thing is, has not been hard to know that like somebody was there trying to hurt me and Gannon, and I'm getting knocked out of it. I no, I understand. Trying to fight for my body, trying to fight for someone not doing something to my body. That's why I'm just trying to make sure I know everything that happened. Remember, this is about the truth. This is not not about anything but me and you and the truth. So. And I can't tell people that because then they're going to say nothing to me, call me names, and then you won't even want me. Why would I not want you? I don't, I don't understand what you mean by that. I tried. I didn't know what was going on. All of it was a blur in and out trying to figure out. I got up at one point and ran to the door and sent Lena away. Sure, anybody in a logical state of mind could have said, why didn't you give Lena a note to run to the neighbors? He knew everything. He knew everything about us. He knew our names. He knew where we worked. He knew where Harley worked. He knew where we drove. So, back up a second, too. So, just because I want to know about Gannon's well-being, too. We already covered what happened to you, but you're saying... This, initially, you told me Gannon got beat up and and he took him away, but the, you didn't say that this time. So, b- please tell me. I said Gannon jumped on his back, like when he was trying to hurt me. Gannon okay. jumped on his back, mm-hmm. and that's clearly what I told the detective. Okay, so what happened to Gannon in that instance? Because I I, I got to know that. I don't know. I just remember Gannon was on the other side. I was on where the door was at. Okay. Gannon was behind me on the floor and was just crying. And was then it, they was were, he bleeding they, or anything? Was it like I don't I don't know that he would if he was bleeding or anything. Okay. Right. I don't remember. All I could barely see what was going on. Was there any, was there any blood on the floor after you got? Do you remember anything like that? When I woke up, there was no blood anywhere. I okay. probably went after the second time. So so when I ran back upstairs, they sent Lena away. And I said, Lena, please go get um, the meal. Harley pulls up. I says, Harley, please take Lena to Dollar Tree. And they're like, okay. I said, please take them now and get these items. Exactly Har- so what Har- I did. did. Did Harley notice that you were distraught or anything? Harley was, yeah, she was just looking at me like, what in the world? I said, please just go get the items. And Harley was like, what are they? I was like, carpet spray for the dog smell and the carpet powder for the dog smell. And they, Lena and Harley left. Okay. 
Right. Because I didn't want Lena and Harley to come in. And there you got two more people involved in this. He's downstairs with Gannon. I don't know what in the hell is going on. I'm freaked out like if this I'm in some lifetime movie. And no matter who I called or said anything to, they're going to do me just like they're doing me now. Came back downstairs. Came back downstairs. Tried to plead with him about what was exactly going on. He had Gannon wrapped in his arm, like his arm around him. Well, was uh, saying he Tisha, hold on just a second. Just, I, I'm trying to understand. So, oh my goodness. So you're downstairs and all this is going on and the guy is downstairs and you send Lena away? You, like, you come upstairs and send Lena away while the guy's still downstairs? Right, or did you want Lena to come in and be there too? No, no, I'm I just mean, trying, babe, I'm just trying to understand everything because some of this, this is new information for me that you didn't tell me initially, so I'm just trying to process. Because you wouldn't let me, you I, wouldn't let me sit there and talk to you. Okay, you I. You treated me like a criminal. Okay, I'm just trying to understand it, so I'm just trying to sort through all of it, so keep going. Thank you for clarifying, though. <laughs> you tried over it. What's wrong? I tried so hard. You tried so hard to do what? I was trying to protect everybody, but I couldn't get back up the stairs. Once I let Lena go, I don't know why I couldn't even like figure out like what to do if I ran outside in the yard. What was I going to do? So this was so you sent Lena to the mailbox, or you sent her with Harley? Was with? I it, sent her to the mailbox, and it's okay. harder when. And Holly gets there, and I sent Harley a message, and I said, I sent Harley a message, like, quickly, and said, please get Lena as soon as you get back and go to Dollar Tree. I'll explain later. Oh, uh, so, so, so you sent her a message, and they went back downstairs? Right, because I was trying to check on Gannon. But I thought you said you saw Harley when she got home. I did. They, I, I sent her a message to let her know they both, Lena pulled up, Lena came up. Okay. I sent Lena to the mailbox. Harley pulled right up. Look at the camera. Since your neighbor has every fucking camera footage, he should be able to see that they came up and I freaking sent him right away. Well, I'll probably have to pay him another $5,000 to get him to do that, so I don't think that's going to happen. It's bullshit, ain't it? So I went back down. It's not funny because he did get paid. I know I'm not. It's bullshit. So he went back downstairs. I mean, I went back downstairs, and I'm, like, trying to figure out, and he's just telling him that he had a new family and, like, all kinds of things, and, and I'm sitting there trying to grab Gannon, and next thing I'm, I'm on the ground again. And you can't overpower someone when they put their fingers on your mouth. And this was in Gannon's room again? Yes. Okay, all right. No one tried to help. No one cared. People treating me like a criminal. When I came through, I woke up. Whatever. Whatever I could say and look around and think, I thought I was in a dream. And I woke up. And Gannon was gone. And that was the second time you went downstairs and he, he hurt you. Second time he hurt me, and once I woke up from that, Gannon was gone. Okay, so you got you pat you blacked out again, is what you're saying? Yes, because uh, I okay. hit my head several times because I was trying. Uh, what I was trying to do, I was trying inside the closet, a uh, closet door in there. I was trying to get in there because I was like, man, there has to be something in there that I can just like swing, whatever, whatever, whatever. I didn't know how to use the freaking big gun, so if I'd have left out from sending Harley and Lena. Oh, wait, I didn't know how to use your big gun, like the, the assault rifle. And my gun wasn't in the like in the spot that it always was because you know why? My gun was already in my car. But uh, but babe, I'm just trying to understand here. You told me initially that the gun was in the house and that there was he grabbed it in in or That's so, your black gun. He had your black gun. Yours. He had he had my my little pistol, right? The black one, yes. Okay, all right. Because I thought I, maybe I'm wrong, but I thought initially you said your gun. That's why I was confused. No, my gun was outside. In the he car. had okay. your black gun. That's why I was terrified. 
He knew everything about us. He threatened us. Every single thing. He knew what kind of car that your mom had drove there and stayed there the whole time in a rental car. Hey, when did um, when did you bring your gun back in after all this happened? You told me to go get all the guns together. No, no, that was when we were when I was collecting them. I'm, you said your gun was in the car. No, 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 Albert. On the phone call with me. You said, go check and see and be accountable for all the guns. When oh, I told yeah, you Oh, yeah, because you had stored them downstairs in those. Uh, my gun was in the. Uh, I don't in know about. Beta? I don't know about yours, but my gun was in one of the totes. Remember, you had put it there. Right, because the lady was babysitting. Okay, so the guy had the gun and he put it back in the tote? No, he didn't put the gun back in the tote. The gun was left there. So you put it back when in I the tote? When I woke up, the gun was left there. Gannon was gone. It was like I thought he was hiding. I legit thought I was in complete shock and thought Gannon was hiding. Okay. I even I even mentioned to the girls I go because I, I was shocked, culture shocked, thinking what the fuck happened? I, oh my god! Like I don't know how I'm going to handle this. I didn't get the time to even go through any of the emotions of it all to think what happened because all I could immediately do was go into like the the the, the defense mode of being like, oh my god, okay, get the girls out of here. Okay, Gannon's going to be back by the time he's supposed to be back. Because in the end, when Gannon was leaving, I remember him asking him, was he going to take him to Uncle Matt's house? That's, I remember that being blacked out. So Gannis freely went with him. I don't know Uncle Matt. I'm not fucking crazy. So he left with Uncle Matt in a car or something or in a van or, or you don't know? I don't know why he left in. I just know that the whole thing started to add up because Ganna kept going outside with some gate. Ganna had to be talking to somebody outside of that gate. I begged the fucking El Paso County police officers to find anything on that side of the house where Ganna might have went out at night talking to whoever it was. And any cars that was parked on that side of the house. Nobody helps me. Okay, so I... I, I... I'm trying to just, this is what's bothering me about this part, and I'm just, I want to be real with you because we're trying to work together on this, but I went and asked all the neighbors, myself, like all like cameras in front of our house, to the side of our house, everything, to look and see if Gannon left the house anywhere from like 2 to 4, 4.30, anything like that, and no cameras have him leaving, so I mean... I don't, Where are what kind of cameras? Are uh, they like Rogers that run twenty four seven? Yes, like three, four, five of the neighbors have those twenty four seven cameras. Okay, so, and then some are like one? ours, which are motion sensor. Okay, which ones? Because we need to know which direction that their that their cameras are pointed in order for that to happen. Okay, well that's something this we can look I'm into. This is what I tried to help. Okay, that's something we need to look into. So it, either they they went out in front, I'm assuming, right? Not the front door. So what, what, the garage? I would say the garage or either out the back door because Gannon had the gate code, like the key. And he kept going out there with this key or trying to unlock it or keep it unlocked with this key. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. This, so I understand. So now Gannon, in the, in, with all this going on, Gannon tells the guy there's a key to the gate and then they open the gate no, and bring the key no, back in the house? No, no. Did you listen to my story? Yeah, the I, night, yeah. The I, other I, night, Gannon kept going outside with the gate. I'm thinking that the gate was automatically left unlocked. Oh, okay. Did you lock it back before I got home? No, I didn't lock anything. Okay, all I, right. I didn't do anything unless they locked it or the police locked it because Harley okay. said the police put cameras in it and locking it. Okay, locking maybe, everything up. We can find that out. Maybe the police locked it back up. So let's. Yeah, that, fair enough. So. I. That just all, all that kind of is blowing my mind. You know, he wasn't seen leaving. The key to the gate was in the house. The gun was where it's supposed to be. I'm just trying to figure it all out, Tisha. The That's gun wasn't, wasn't, the gun wasn't where it was supposed to be because I put the gun back in when you told me to collect them. Okay. Well, hopefully, the gun I mean, was downstairs. they got my gun now, so hopefully they can get this uh, Mexican guy's fingerprints. So. Yeah. Would, would be perfect to me. 
Um, I've said this nothing but from day one. I know, and that's what I'm trying to get. So get all them this information. You know, I think the FBI is in on it now. So we're trying to get them all this information. Look for a fingerprint on the gun. You know, maybe they haven't looked there. Look for a fingerprint on the lock of the gate. You know, stuff like that. As the little things that they may have missed. You know, during this process. But why? Why would they have not have done that? And I maybe I'm just upset by this because I feel like they barked up the wrong tree for two fucking weeks, Albert. It's been three weeks almost, Tisha. Yes, I'm I, talking about. I agree. Bother me. I agree with you. I'm, I'm as frustrated as anybody because I don't know anything. And Albert I, Stout, do you think I did this? Tisha, Tisha Stout, I don't know. I'm just but trying. Really? I'm trying to help you. Okay, I'm trying to help you get the truth out there. But you've got to, you've got to tell me the truth. Okay? I but did. The, I, I Same know. Thing I told you is what I told the police. The only difference is, I thought it was the carpet person, but once I went around because I was freaking out trying to figure out I was like if I could go get this fucker and bring him in and I drove through the neighborhood the description that I gave El Paso is exactly what I saw but that is not the exact description description that I gave to of this carpet person so my point behind that was I don't think it was the carpet person because I eliminated him because he didn't have craters on his face he did or didn't didn't. So, but let me, <laughs> well, hold on, hold on. Let, you know what? Something. Remember how? Oh my goodness! Thinking back to this whole uh, that trip you made for the bike, you never found the guy, right? The Craigslist no, because guy. Because it started looking creepy. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You you don't think that this Craigslist guy had maybe had anything to do with you? I mean, I mean, not you, but you know what I mean. Oh, I'm freaking out. Sorry. Um, and you, don't Robert, think, I don't know. you don't think that Craigslist guy followed you or just found you? Maybe you told him, hey, I'm driving my husband's red frontier and I'll meet you there or something like that. I mean, I don't know. I'm just trying to think of anything. Okay. But the, okay, so let's say it's him. I don't, what I don't like is that people are sitting here saying, well, there's nothing that shows you guys leaving. Leaving. If there's no, like, if there's nothing at this point in time, it's starting to get dark. Because in case you didn't know, in Colorado, it's getting dark around that time. Okay. There has to be something that points to that direction that shows any shadows, movement, anything. And if it didn't, it was because the ring sensitivity didn't pick it up. All right, so so uh, listen, I, I I want I want to I want to be clear with you that I I am not I don't give a f flip about social media. You know that I don't have Facebook. I'm not on there, so I don't know what these people are saying. So let's me and you focus on us getting to the bottom of what's going on. Okay, let's try to block out that other stuff for so we can get the truth here. Um, I'm really, I, man. This Craigslist thing is really driving me nuts now. Do you think that when, 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 when did you go? What was the time frame you went there again? You went to Dunkin' Donuts, right? Is they have whatever time they have me I, on footage the first time at Petco. Oh, at Petco. So after that is when you left. Because I went back to Petco to get more clothes. Okay, so you went. So then you when, when did you go back to Petco after the Craigslist trip? Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. And you said the guy was already in the house before you got there, you think? When I got there, the guy was already definitely, most definitely in the house or had already been in the house waiting or whatever it may be, which is why I thought it was the carpet guy because that was the person that I gave the garage yeah, code. Yeah, you gave the garage code to him, right. yeah. Right. But then the more I laid and the more I slept and the more I kept worrying about it and thinking about it and yada, yada, yada. Gana kept having his room door locked. I was even so terrified to think that this person even spent the night in our home. Oh, you, know oh, you think they, he was there the whole time? I don't know. Do you know how worried I've been about this? I know, that's freaking me out because remember those other stories you were talking about about people coming in the back door and stuff while they thought people were away? That, I've been going through all that in my head too. Albert, I've done nothing but... I, I, look, I have this book right here. You can hear it. It's like of all anything and everything that I thought of that might have been out of order. But 
anything. All right, all right, so, okay, so maybe. You think I don't want my life back? You think I don't want my family back? I know, me, I'm trust me, me too. I'm not a I'm tired of being portrayed as one. Okay, but you gotta help me, because I, I'm. Oh. I, I, I'm trying to sort through all this and put a good timeline together so I can tell this somebody reached out from the FBI and I'm trying to tell them a timeline of what I know okay and I'm trying to make sure they get the truth the first time this lady that called me okay so why are the El Paso people not going after this why I, I don't know maybe the FBI is I don't know I, that's not I, I know they're doing everything they can maybe they missed some things we don't know but listen something you told me that first day that I'm trying to figure out when the, when when did you do the like you said you cleaned everything up cleaned everything up yeah from Gannon's room or wherever you got you know somebody did bad things to you or whatever I was just talking about like the clothes I had on and like shoes and stuff Oh, so you just changed your clothes and then and then threw them away, like you said, and Gannon, the whatever Gannon had on, you said you threw that away too. They got that out of the, the back of the trash. It oh. was his, his shirt that he wore that was burnt and stuff like that. Oh. That's all I meant, like cleaned up. I didn't mean like clean up anything bad or anything. I'm just saying, like, I didn't want to keep that stuff on and call and police. But you, but you, that. you told me that first day you cleaned up the whole area because you didn't want Lena to see it when she got home. That's what you told me. Yeah, my clothes and my under. Do you, do you want me to really go in depth about that? I, I'm not trying to make you relive anything that happened to you. I'm just trying to there's just some truth that I'm trying to find about, I mean, if something was cleaned up or something, then, you know, I don't know, maybe... Just go ahead and ask me. If I, any, whatever you're trying to say to me, don't... Just, just be honest. I just don't want the police I, to miss anything else, okay? I mean, we think they've missed all these other pieces, and then, I mean, if you cleaned up something that could give them DNA evidence on this Mexican guy, then we need it. They took my whole DNA from this. They wouldn't let me pee. That hospital bill that I sent you was the whole kit on my body. I just... But but tell me, why did you tell me? I just don't understand why you told me you cleaned up an area, and then now you're telling me you just changed your clothes. That, that, see, that's... No, when I mean, you're talking about cleaning up the area, I'm talking about from Gannon. Like, Gannon had, from his burn marks, there was blood on the wall and on the light switch. All oh, I did was oh, wipe oh, it down. oh, oh, so, so that, so you cleaned up what, whatever Gannon's stuff, what blood or whatever was, right? That was prior. Oh, where, but where was that at? In his room when he woke up Monday morning. But like where? But where? Where in his room? You said you did say the wall because he had uh, he was wiping his fingers on the wall or something. I don't know if he wiped his fingers on his wall. I just know his arm probably hit the wall when he was asleep. Oh, I got you. Okay, all right. So, so you clean, but you clean that up, okay? Because I never saw that. That's the first I heard of it. So you you clean up wherever his bl his blisters or his burn mark hit the wall. Did you clean something else up? Light switch from where he touched it. Oh, but that was after you showed it to me. Yes. You yeah, you showed it to me and Lena and then told me that he was uh, picking his fingernails so bad that he bled so bad, remember? Yes, he did pick his fingernails. Oh, okay. So, so he, picked, he picked his fingernails and he picked... I'm just trying to clarify. Picked his fingernails and his, uh, his blister or his burn mark or whatever. What do you mean? Gannon picks everything that's open. Uh, yeah, I, I'm why not. Are you, why are you acting like you're on, got me on some trial with this? He picks his fingers all the time. Babe, because you. anything that's open. Babe, you're absolutely right about that. But I, I don't know why you feel like you're on trial. I'm talking to my wife, trying to figure out the truth. And like I told you before, it, the truth hasn't always lined up. So I just want to find out all the details so we can find Gannon. That's it. Albert, I gave you every detail. But you were coming at me saying, I thought you did this afterwards. Gannon bleeds all the time. Right. Gannon has huge nose no, nosebleeds. Did you tell him the nosebleeds from your truck is from Gannon? When did he have a nosebleed in my truck? Oh, my God. Don't even play. It's been there since Alaska. And the top part of your truck, you have... But his hands had blood marks on it for like a year and something ago. Maybe. I, I don't... 
I, I'm not doubting you. I don't know. I just don't remember that. But that that might have happened. I know he has had a nosebleed once in a while. I don't remember that no, in Alaska. His nosebleeds are like in Colorado, or at least once every week or two. Every week or two, Gannon has a nosebleed. This is why I get angry. Cause like people come up here and talk all this shit, and they don't even know him. I, I don't know like I said I don't know what the people are saying on social media I don't even bother with that and you know I have it for a long time but I'm just trying to all right um can, say what you gotta say Albert. I'm just trying to retrace some steps in retrace some steps in my head did um so the Mexican guy did, did you see like anybody I'm trying to think of this Craigslist. Did you? Did he have a picture, or did he like give you any information about him? Like, hey, I'm, you know, other than where to find him at or anything like that. I mean, how? What was the framework of like how you set up that to meet him? Was Everything it? is on my phone, Albert. I, uh, babe, I don't know. I, I, don't, I guess they got your phone. You keep telling me that, but I'm just trying to figure out how you went about doing this. So maybe we can. Uh, that that freaking lady that called me bugging the shit out of me from the FBI, you know, maybe she maybe that's something relevant. I don't know. I reached out to him. They have access to my phone. Okay. On my phone, I click the Craigslist thing, which generates this whole like number, something, 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 whatever the email they do to protect the people that are selling stuff. I had all that and access to my phone for that. I have limited access because a lot of my stuff don't, didn't load. A lot of it weren't backed up. My emails weren't backed up. My notes weren't backed up. The only thing backed up when I logged in to the iCloud that it let me in temporarily was pictures. If they gave me my phone, which is mine, it would clearly have everything. And since they've done all these things, they should see this. They should see pictures of where I took again and at home with me later. They should see all this shit, man. And it pisses me the fuck off that no one's even caring. Everybody's wanting to point the finger, but won't let me sit there and show you. All right, Leticia. Okay. I'm, you told me to be straight. Then I got you, then I got you on the phone. And I'm trying to sit here and tell my own husband every little detail, everything. He thinks I don't want my family. All right, Tisha, listen. Uh, like I said the whole time, I'm just trying, trying to help you and trying to keep you and Harley safe from all. I mean, these people are after me now. I don't know who the hell it is, but I, like I said, I had to go get my clothes changed and everything just so I could blend in better. And I want you to know that no matter what. No matter, no matter what, we can work through this together, and I can help you, okay? But you just gotta let me help you. But I have a very, you told me to be straight up. I got a very straight up question, okay? Are you ready? Yeah. Did you kill Gannon? No! I need to know. I need you to answer me yes or no right now. Did I, I kill Gannon? Did the you? answer is no. I can't believe you asked me this. I just gotta know you. I told me to be straight up. I gotta know what's happening to my son. Tell get, me why you would think I killed Gannon. There's a lot. There's a lot of unknowns. I mean, you. I, I'm be, being straight up again. You changed your story again to me for the fourth time. Okay. And now I changed my story. You did. This is the fourth version of the same story. Okay. I, wow. I mean, I, like half of what you told me today with the cut foot. And now he's got burned arms and picking it and his butt's bleeding. All this stuff is, is new to what you told me the other day. And the other day you told me to cl you cleaned up the area where you got raped so nobody would see it. But now you told me you just changed clothes. I just don't know what the hell's going on. I didn't tell you. First off, you never even listened to me about anything that went I on. did. I, no, you stopped because I you listened to you. screamed at me. I listened to you and then I went and got the guns and put them in the truck. And then I came back and list, me and Landon listened to you. Then I stopped and picked your story apart. So get it straight, Tisha. I listened to you and I said if I'm wrong about the rape, I will get on my knees and beg you for forgiveness. Did I not say that? Yeah, but you haven't. Exactly, because I haven't been proven wrong yet. I want the truth. If I'm wrong, if, the, if, if the, the police, no matter what they're doing, the FBI, the CBI, the CBS, whoever, 
Okay, if they tell me I'm wrong, I will publicly, in front of the world, get on a camera and tell you I'm sorry. But until that happens, we're going to find the truth. How can you tell me that someone didn't come? I don't understand. How can you tell me that someone didn't do something to hurt me and take in? How? I'm, I'm not telling you that. I'm telling you... It hasn't been proven one way or the other. You said you banged your head on the freaking table. I, now I gotta tell them to go check out the table and see if there's any blood or, or any of your. They already knew that. They had already asked that. Okay, but that's the first I heard of it. You see what you see what I'm saying? Because you never would talk to me. You literally just sat here in a conversation and asked me, "Did I kill our child?" Yes, I did because I, I because if you say no, then I can't. I I'll stop thinking that you did it. Okay. Well, you think Gannon's dead? That's horrible. I don't know what to think. My the, my son's blood. You're telling me his blood's all over the walls, and now you're telling no, you're telling That's me uh, the Mexican guy that had the gun to your head or whatever took him away, and he knows him, and he could be anywhere. Wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on. Gun. So so where did you get that piece from? That was what. That so I, now you got me twisting all your stories up because that was from the first time you told me the rape story that he had a gun to your head. And you told me it was he your, had your gun. gun. You he told me, but you first you told one. me it was your gun. So that's fine. I'm I'm not debating I the points here. I said but. my gun. I said the black one. Okay. Okay. Fine. But I mean, you know, in your heart, I would never hurt Gannon. I yes, I I absolutely believe that. I, but I'm doing everything I can to help you right now. <laughs> and if, if you, you it, but me, but if you Tisha, listen, me, Tisha, listen. The thing is. If you don't, but it's not just. It, I asked you if you if you killed him. You said no, and I'm sorry. That was a hard question. But if you know anything, or you did anything, or are just upset about it, we can we can work together, and I can help you. But I can't help you if you don't tell me anything. It's just there's so many unknowns, Tisha. Oh my God. <laughs> I mean, was what did anything happen that was an accident that you just that you're scared about? Really? I'm just trying to teach you. You know, you know, with my army training, I'm trained to do ask all these questions to get us in a safe place, right? And that's why I took the guns out from the get go. That's just my oh training my kicking god. in. Oh my god! I really thought for like I, I thought out of this conversation, like I really thought you were going to be supportive of me. I thought you were going to bring your family back together. And I thought that we were going to talk about everything, every single day of nothing but Gannon. That's what I'm trying to do. I didn't know for a second you would ask me that I kill Gannon. I can't believe that. Well, I'm glad you said no. That, that gives me a lot of hope and peace. I love Gannon. Maybe, just maybe, you might have a brother. Maybe. We talked about, we cried about Kobe. We did a lot together. What? what? No, I would never want to hurt Okay, he well, okay. Dogs. Okay, Tisha, let me ask you this way then. I don't believe you killed him, but did, did something bad happen to him and he maybe maybe he is dead or not with us anymore and, and you just panicked and didn't know what to do? I mean, is there anything like that? Just any information is what I need. I just, just, I can, we can help you. I can help you get through this. But it's, I mean, but we got to know the information about Bubba. I mean, just think of, I mean. Really, Yes, I'm just trying to figure out what happened to him. He's gone and nobody knows anything, but you were the last one to hear him speak. Okay, you, which was Monday when you were driving around and he left the house. The last time we heard him speak, I, I don't know. I don't know when that was. Before I left, probably. When I left and he went downstairs to watch Pokemon. That's the last memory I have of him. Albert, let me tell you something. People don't have the life that I have. People don't just be a normal person. She's doing her thing. Finally had what they want to do and be in the sky working. Oh, they don't do that. People premeditate things in life. There is no sign or indications of anything that I would have ever hurt those children. I fought for you. I fought for them. Yes, you did. You fought for all of us. You're right. I'm not... 
I'm not questioning any of that, Tisha. I, I just was. Did it, did an accident happen? I mean, other than the candle or the burn? Accident. I don't know. I'm just trying to you ask all the questions. I work with children long enough, Albert. If an accident happened, I'm smart enough. I know what to do. I've had plenty of friends who've been in situations where they've been in the classroom. They accidentally dropped the kid. The kid might have broke their leg. You go to the people and you tell them it's an accident and you work through it. Okay, so all right, you made a you 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 also said something that was calmed my heart, you know, tremendously about Bubba. That you know, basically, you didn't premeditate anything. So whatever happened to him had to be an accident, just like the candle. And you, I mean, obviously you didn't you wouldn't plan on something like that because you're a teacher and you do all those babysitting events. I know you wouldn't hurt kids intentionally, but whatever happened was an accident, and I know you didn't plan it. So, so he he would have had to have died naturally, then. Other Why than, are you even saying he is dead? I, I I don't know, Tisha. I can't even believe you are saying that. Get it is a lie. What is wrong with you? Because it's just uh, this. None of this makes any sense. I mean, he would have been found by now. Okay. <sighs> He didn't, the, all the cameras, all that footage shows him not leaving the house other than in the truck. And I just, I, I, like I said, I'm just trying to help you get through this. Help me? Yes, help you. Because You're trying to help me get through this. Because, I, yes, I am trying to help you. I want to know what happened to Gannon and try to help you and keep Harley safe in everything that I've said the whole time. Because that's who help. I am and you know that. Help. See what y'all think. This is what y'all think. Y'all think somebody's going to come in here and say something just to appease everyone. But a true person who is completely innocent, y'all can keep beating me down in the ground all you want to because I didn't do it. I'm not beating they you down. Take everything. You don't want me anymore? Fine. You don't want our family anymore? Fine. Y'all took my car. Y'all took everything. I didn't take anything. They got all my shit too, Tisha. I I, I, I got two cars now because Harley's not going to pay for it. I got two cars I got to pay for that I'm, I can't even see or touch. Harley has been begging you. No, she hasn't. That, I know. Yes, she has. So I, I beg you every day, Albert, why are you not with your wife? Since you want to be so honest and ask questions, why are you not with your wife and daughter? Because tell the truth. Okay, I'm going to tell you the truth right now. Because of this conversation, Tisha, I don't know, and I've told you that the whole time. I'm confused. I'm all over the place. I just can't. I can't get the truth from you or the police or nobody. And now, you're, now, you know, it's just even worse now because I got another story. I've got to try to make a theory from. Wait, another story? This is a, you have never talked to me. But you just told me, you told me a few minutes ago, we had, uh, and we went over it. I, you told me the first story. No, you, first you told me he ran away. Then it was the rape story. Then it was the second rape story. I now it's the believe, third rape I story. I can't believe you just said the rape story. I'm, ju I, I'm just, what do you want me to call it? The, the story of Gannon disappearing? Okay, you told me the first version of that, the second version, and now the I've third version. I told you a second or third Person. Yes. This is the first time you sit down and talk to me. No, that day that I got home. No, the day I got home, that next morning after my mom and sister and Landon and everybody was at the house, you you told me you were texting Bethel and you told her the story. I don't know what you told her, and I, I kind of don't. Is e the same, that's which is, yes, you do. I don't even care. They, they no. let y'all there. They had y'all there. Had us where? Oh my God! I can't believe you're lying to me right now. About what? I'm not lying to you about anything, Tisha. Albert, they had y'all at the police department when I was there. Oh, oh, oh! Yo, you mean when, when Landon showed up and then they brought, you know, I was already there or whatever. Is that what you're talking about? Because that's the only time I know. I don't even know when you're there. I just assumed you had finally come in that night. Or was it the next day you came in? I don't even know, Tisha. Well, you were there because she was talking to you there. Who was? Bethel. 
She was talking to me at the police station. Yes. I, I, honestly, most of most of my talking was with uh, Mark, the other guy that was at Starbucks. So I I don't know what you mean. She was talking to me. I think I might have I, talked to. I think I talked to her for like ten or fifteen minutes. I'm, if I'm. Not. I did not. Did not tell you anything different. This is how my day went. I was going to lay down. Lay down. Hey, Tisha, 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 I believe you. Okay. I, what I want you to answer for me is those simple questions. Did did anything, did Gannon die and you just freaked out? Or was there an accident involved? Did you kill him? I, answer all those questions. Those are the ones that I want to know. Okay, I don't care about who talked to who, when we went where. That, honestly, at that, this point, none of that freaking matters. What matters is that little 11-year-old boy is, is either out there or he's not, and i got to know that. And you're the only one that has any information regarding that. And I gave you that information, and you're not going to look for it. No, but you you didn't, you ignored my question. I, I mean, answer those questions for me. Hey, okay, go. What's the first question? All right. Did you kill Gannon? No. Okay. Did you, did Gannon die on your watch, whether it was an accident or naturally from some injury? No. Okay. Did Gannon have an accident of, of a serious nature and you freak out and cover it up? No. So the answer is to, to no to all of that? Correct. Okay. Now these, this is going to be very uncomfortable for you, even more uncomfortable than what I just asked you, but... Did Harley kill Gannon? Oh my God, no! Okay, did she, any of the same questions, did she have anything to do with an accident, a cover-up? Was she involved in this at all with you? No. I haven't been involved either. So I just, but, but so something, so there's a blank somewhere that I just, you have not filled the blank. So... It's you. So you don't think for a second that someone came in the house to Gannon? You don't think that? I don't doubt that. I don't know what to believe, but I'm not doubting you. I'm just having to ask all these questions. So, I mean, <sighs> I begged you. I begged you. I said, "Hey, let us all be together. Look at me in my eyes and ask me that question." Feel it in your heart and then ask me that question. Well, what, but but you gotta you gotta look at it from my perspective, okay? First of all, uh, and I got a couple things to say, so let me get through it. These these stories, just like I've said the whole time, they don't sound legit to me. They just don't add up. They're not true. Something is off from every story because there's different versions. So that's number one. Number two. There's no different versions. I've only talked to you once. Okay. Okay. All right, fair enough, but I mean, you got to put yourself in my shoes, okay? W what the hell would you do if this was Harley, okay? And and you didn't have all the information. How would you put all these pieces together? So I mean, you got for my glasses. How am I supposed to put all these pieces together when I don't even have a third of the pieces? I'm just trying to fit the piece, find the pieces, and fit them together. Question? You want me to answer that question? Which one? The one about what if it was Harley? Yeah. Yeah. Answer that question. Okay. So as soon as you tell me this, when when I get off this phone, I will have my husband and my children together in a home, and our asses will be praying, and we will be on the phone with the detectives, and we will be saying, "Listen, I support my husband, and we are need we need to find someone over here. If somebody had to see something. Ask them again." Do something. We will be putting a fucking alert out everywhere. We will be putting a description out everywhere. We will close the fucking borders from Colorado to all of them, up and down 95, because at least the fucking Mexico. 95? What? what that shit. Why would I'm you? I'm sorry, 85, whatever. It's 85? Called. What's the road called? 25. It's the oh. interstate. It leads to Mexico. Well, you, please be careful when you say those things because then they're going to start looking up and down 95 on the East Coast. Okay? Uh, okay, sorry. And that's not going to help us. It, I mean, since you know he's not over there, that's not going to help us if they get sent over there. Okay? So, so but, but you didn't answer my question. How am I supposed to put all these pieces together? You're telling me let's go home and pray. And I've been praying my... I, I've been praying nonstop. Okay? But... There, you know, we got to have action too. So, 
I, so here, I, listen. I gotta go because now I'm now I'm freaking. Everybody's gonna start questioning me at the house. Where have you been? What are you doing? Are you involved? I'm, I'm gonna get all those questions now. So I. The house. Who are you staying with? The, um, Uncle Jeff, and then freaking Veronica and all them that are all over the place. Okay, so. So uh, why would you have to be anywhere near them? I don't have to be, but you saw we had why to do. Could you listen. Be with your wife and your daughter. Tisha, listen. I had to do these statements and interviews and all this shit. It's just nonstop. Every day is something else. Okay, so if if you think if you think all this information is what they need, apparently the the El Paso people haven't done their job and they haven't forwarded it to the FBI. So I'm I I don't know. There's some Amber lady called me from the FBI. And I'm gonna just email you her number. And her name, and if you want to pass this information to her, that's much higher than the freaking CBS I or whatever you call it. To the FBI because they called everyone I know. Okay, well then, that's what you the, can tell them too. Okay, I but I don't have the document you have. So, I, anyways, I'm just gonna send you the contact, and if you want it, you take it. If not, I can't make you do anything. But I gotta go. Okay. Okay, but that's not how you would say trying to find your son. You would not say if you don't want to do anything. Then blah, blah, blah. No, that's not you true because I can't. What you I, I wanted you with me the whole time and you left. So I'm going to give you the information you need to pass your stuff along Albert, and then Albert, you can do that, okay? Albert, listen to me. We don't have anywhere to stay. I'm asking you to stay with your wife and daughter and let's do this together. And you tell me no if you think that you don't give a shit about us and you don't want that. You tell me no right now. Tell you no. Or you tell me yes. If you want your family together because you believe I've me. I wanted my family no, together. Listen to stop. me. Listen to me. I wanted my family together the whole time. And listen, I, you're not letting me help you. So I recommend that you get in talk, co contact with this Amber lady because she offered me help and safety because I told her what I was going through. And she, I, I'm sure they'll do the same thing for you, especially all that you've been through with the... You're telling me about the social media stuff and people chasing you around, you said in the email. So I'm going to send you her contact information, okay, and then you decide whether or not to contact her to, to find protection for yourself and get them this information, okay? But I got to go, okay? But wait. I got to go, Tisha. I got to go. So you're not going to answer the question. What you're question? I said, I said I wanted you to be together, but I got to go, okay? I got to okay, go. Wait. Bye. Bye.